How you guys doing? Bobby D here. There is a lot of people who want to know the full story about me. And um, they want me to write a book or anything, but I'm not very good that much about writing anything. But it comes to my attention, so many people don't know me. Now, I am going to give you my full story. My mom was married to my dad, who lost his wife to cancer years before. They got married in 1973. And with my three brothers, Albert, Emo, and Michael, they lived in a good neighborhood in Tingsboro. And they, yeah. But a blessing came when my mom went to Canada at the Cup of Madeline. She prayed for a baby. I was the seed that mom got. So she became pregnant. But also, she had complications. She had toxemia. And I almost died before I was born. And my mom almost died before she was born. It's just that I started to walk and talk a little, to talk a little bit. I got way, way, way and all that. But then, during my babyhood, they put me a lot of vaccines that gave me problems. I had some disabilities. I couldn't walk or talk till I was two. I thought about a thing for my dad when I was a baby and all that, but when I started to have disabilities, my dad wasn't there for me. You know, I have had a good have a good relationship when I was a baby with my brothers and my aunts and uncles and all that. But then I had the disabilities kicked in. I started acting up, and had all these problems. Mom was a specialist, and then, lo and behold, I had pervasive developmental disorder. They didn't call autism at the time. But they think there's all this, this, this vein, all that. I started having behavioral problems. I started acting out. I was lucky enough to make it to preschool and then to a normal kindergarten. I had problems in first grade with my behavior. And I also had problems in second grade. My dad wanted to get away from me, so he went to the pines and I called with a friend and waited till I've gone to bed. The problems were so worse. They enrolled me into a special school in Methuen. And that's when my first accomplishment began. When I won the spelling bee. I was lucky enough to win the spelling bee. <laughs> well, 
I still have behavior problems. You know what they did to me? Even though I get punished, I got punished by getting an ass whooping by my mom and dad. I also got restrained. They hurt me. They hurt me a lot <coughs> at that special school in Methuen. Because they did not know how to handle me. And then four years later, they sent me to White House School in Chelmsford. Um, where it was still special needs school. And the thing about it is, it's the, it was downgrade education. But how did I mainstream to go to high school? Very simple. I went to Tingsville High School in 1988. Not as a student, but as the manager of a football team. I became very emphatic about the high school and had so much fun being a manager. I get to learn about the high school and everything. But, was, but thanks to Tingsboro Special Education, they let me lean in into the normal high school life. I started off as one day a week. In, uh, jun in junior high, and it was the seventh grade. Everything went good, it went to two days a week, and that went good. Also, during those one day to two days a week, I became the basketball manager and assistant coach of the high school basketball team, and all that. I, my team that year that I managed as and coached for first year won the league championship. <coughs> and they made it to the North Finals. But they did not win the North Championship. So sad. Debbie does do enough to, um, get accolades to be in the North Finals of a state tournament. That is good. But there's more to that. During the spring season, while I was doing the two-day-a-week high school, I became the manager of the baseball team. And all and it went good. I catched foul balls and all that, returned them to the team and all that. And then, but during the many the whole many years, my dad shunned away from me, and my brothers shunned away from me. And during those years, also. I was a little bit connected to my aunts and uncles. They treat me good and they treat me harsh and all that. And then everything came into place um, in 1989, 1990 when I started junior high full time. I had a little bit of problems. I went to detention once in a while, but I understood. But one punishment was detrimental to my life. During that time, my dad was diagnosed with esophageal cancer. And he said, I will find a way to make him well. 
But what my dad did to me was he beated me up so badly. He beat me up so badly. And that's why I have a lot of mental problems these days because my dad used to love me, but he really beat me up a lot. It hurt me a lot. And, um, the thing about it is, it's just that I couldn't handle it. So I let out all my aggression when I did the Tanks for High School Junior High Wrestling Tournament. I started to do wrestling just to let out my aggression from the abuse that I got. Well, the Junior High Wrestling Tournament, I got sixth place, dead last, but I competed. I competed. My dad was happy. But dad shunned everybody. He was solely sick, and that's what the cancer did to him. He did not want to deal with it. He hurt everybody. But then, that fateful night, I was watching a made-for-TV movie about the Laker girls. And while I was going to bed, I heard something drop. Then, my mom called 911. My dad was dying. And they tried to revive him, but in the end, when he got to the hospital, he died. And hopefully he went up to heaven. But it was painful to all of us when my dad died. It was more painful to me than ever. During that time, my dad said I joined the track team, but I had behavioral problems. So being out was so bad that I got suspended from the track team for one week. And that was not good. But I graduated junior high. It is what it is. But due to my family's legacy, I was lucky to be elected into the freshman class officership as a freshman class treasurer. Who, if I did not know anything about the, how to do the money, the pressure class was a little disappointed in me, and they almost impeached me. But Mr. Kelleher, I thank him long enough. I thank him for making sure I still got my class relationship and all that. It, I had so many behavioral problems that it was problemsome. My sophomore year in high school wasn't that good because I lost both the classmanship officership to be vice president, but I never won the vice presidency. And I never won the sophomore year in student senate. And what things worse, that during my sophomore year, I got kicked out of the football team. And it sucked. 
Right, back to my freshman year. I did high school wrestling. I did high school wrestling in my freshman year. And I did track in my freshman year. I did, but wrestling has been in my blood. My brothers never did wrestling, but I did. I was one of the original heavyweights in wrestling. And due to my hard work, I wrestled a 320 pounder by the name of Francis Taylor from the Shop Attack. It was a good fight, but sadly enough, I lost. But it showed good excellence in the match. Coach TNT gave me the ownership of becoming a bad cat award winner. That's why I want, I did so good in the wrestling match. Even though the Shelby Tings were won against the Shelby Tech, I got the backhand award for being the best. I was shocked that I got the backhand award. But I'm glad that I got it. I'll tell you more of why of all this, why I got the backhand award and got me qualified for the Hall of Fame later. But while I was being kicked out of the football team in my sophomore year, I was visiting a church in Nashua. I was 16 years at the time. I went to visit the place in Nashua and I went to church the second time. My son and the kids and adults. And I did something that changed my life. What I did was, I accepted Christ as my Lord and Savior. And it was good. I still had behavioral problems. I almost got kicked off the wrestling team because of it in my sophomore year. But I made it through. With the grace of God, um, in March of 1992, I was baptized as a conservative Pentecostal. And that's what it was like, you know, mostly they were more Republican and all that, and it was a conservative Pentecostal. And then, then in that same year, I got picked to do a movie. The movie was called School Ties. And it was a good movie. School Ties was one of the things that um, I'm really proud of. I met a lot of the stars. I got the autographs, but I lost them. And it was good. By that Brendan Fraser, Matt Damon, Ben Affleck. And Randall Bancock. All the good players of the movie. By my summer year, that's when all hell broke loose. I was, I did a part time job working at the Pines, cleaning up the restaurant outside. Then during one of my things, I hit my head on in the basement, and all things started going worse. Uh, I had a little fight with my mom, and I beat her with a pair of sweatpants. I couldn't 
handle it a lot. I told my mom, I ran away to my mom to call the police. Because I felt like I belong in jail. A week later, I got reprimanded by my church for doing something wrong. And I went off everybody. And then I told them to call the police. And I told them to put me in jail. But instead, they sent me to a hospital. After was checked out and behavioral stuff, they sent me to Brookside. They sent me to Brookside Hospital. Where I find out that I have a whole bunch of mental illnesses. But one of the medications they put me on made me more sick. And that was difficult. I had problems all the, the whole time by going out and control them. Then I had more problems with my junior year. But luckily my junior year, the only good part about it was I was in the student council. I was in the student council my junior year. Thanks to my two who I think are my friends. But I was in the student council. But during the winter, I had to go back to Brookside, where I stayed for a couple weeks because of my mental problems. But luckily enough, insurance couldn't cover me much longer. I was able to watch on TV Larry Bird Night, and... Had a good had a good time with um had a good time with um doing all this stuff. There was not that much of a junior year, just tracking all that, and that's it. But then it came to my senior year. That's when I got really sick. The medication that I was on at the time made me poisoned. And I had to go to the General's Behavioral Unit. And they put me on medication. And then I did go to my house school for the um, Halloween party. Also, for my church, I also did the play the t called The Toy Maker. I did the play. I was a tree. I was a tree. But in November of 1993 was the worst. Um, I was in the hospital for a week or so, and they took away, and they took off all the medication that I was on, cold turkey, because it was. But then, when I got discharged, I started having withdrawals. I started having withdrawals. I had to spend some time with my brother on a Saturday. And I had a good time, but the Sunday, one Sunday, I was totally out of it. And I wanted to discipline a child. Mom slept until I went back to bed. When I took a shower and got dressed, an evil voice in my head told me to choke out my mother. That was, I knew that I was in trouble. So when I put my 
hand around her neck while she was sleeping. She woke up and whacked me, and I hit her with a trash can. Then my mom called the police, and I went to my brother's house and beat the living hell out of him. I hit him with a pot, and then they sent me back to the old general hospital where I stayed for six months when they tried to regulate my medication and try all that. They were trying to find me a school during that time. In May, I was sent to Tuxbury State Hospital, and the meds didn't help that much. The school they sent me to for school was the Ivy Street School in Brookline. They put me on so much medication, I've been spent times in the hospital, but I had behavioral problems. So much behavioral problems, they don't know what to do with me. They thought I had a traumatic brain injury. But the truth about it is my mental illness, and then they started figuring out that I have autism. That's when autism came to play over this time. So, um, autism became the picture when I left the Ivy School. And I went to the New England Center for Autism, also known as nowadays the New England Center for Children. But I wasn't a model student. I had so many behavioral problems. Oh. But they stabilized it. They took away all the bad medications a little bit. I still was a little bit psychotic and not functioning, but I was able to work. They got me a job at a Burger King where I started as a lobby attendant. And then... By the end of my schooling, I was a broiler. I did the broiler at Burger King. They're also at the school I made sandwiches and did the copy center. But it was mostly New York Sandwich for Children for me was a vocational school. But during that time in New England Assembly Children, I learned how to have fun. I hosted parties. I played along. I played with a lot of staff. But I also competed in Special Olympics. Yes, I competed in Special Olympics. But the other problem of it was from my senior year in high school, it began that I wanted, the thing about it is my brother Bart wanted to be my guardian. I did not want Bart to be my guardian. I wanted a woman to be my guardian. Now I'm on my family. I wanted not just a guardian, but a girlfriend who will become my wife and who will become my daddy. But due to my mental illness, my target was one person. Nancy Kerrigan. I the so those delusions in my head thought that Nancy Kerrigan would save me. But that's not true. When Nancy Kerrigan got married to Jerry Solomon, I became a little bit bitter. But that wasn't me. That was my illness driving me nuts. 
And I also felt the same way to some of the female staff. If I didn't get my way, I felt so the, the, I really feel bad to the female staff. Because I shouldn't have done what I should have done. All I wanted was someone to take care of me. But during the time while I was in New England family children, Mom said that I wanted to have a government so I can screw an ass. Yeah, right. I want someone to take care of me. Mom was, well, you know, I didn't want my brother's guardian anyway, but I'm, I was stuck with him. And he is doing a good job. But the thing about it is... Even though I won medals, bronze, 1996, regional Campbell bowling, and then silver, and then bronze, you know, all that. But the thing about it was, I was totally psychotic, having delusions of grandeur, and all this clutterness in my head. So one day I wanted to get out of it, so I stopped taking my meds. And how badly I wanted to go to the hospital to get away from that school. I was not a frame of mind. But they found a way to keep me in that school. And to give me some good times. But I didn't, but when my end of my schooling ended because the rules say you gotta be 22 to get out, I wanted definitely to go home to Tingsboro. That's all I want to do is go home to Tingsboro and live a good life. But instead, they wouldn't let me. I wanted to go home, I wanted to live with my brother, and all that. But, it didn't happen that way. What happened next? They found a place for me to go. I lived, I went to a group known as the Main Institute, and I lived in Revere, Massachusetts. I lived in Revere, Massachusetts. And the thing about it was, I had still problems with my behavior and medication, but I was a little bit stable. I was able to do some funding, so I worked as an administrative assistant and he'd been in inspections. But somehow, someone we were kicked out of Revere and then moved to Methuen. I had a bunch of good roommates and housemates, and um, it was good. We were able to do stuff, and that's what the thing's all about. But the thing about it is, um, the next part of my life began in 1999. It was sometime in April that I left the main institute group homes and joined a group home in Tewksbury known as Pondview. It was part of, of Metal Health Association, then Tri City, and then and all that. And then I started to join a club known as the Renaissance Club of Lowell. The Renaissance Club was the best place for me, and 
That's why I had so much fun. During my first year, I was able to do stuff. I put on a show for Clubhouse Certificators from the International Center for Clubhouse Development. And I hosted a New Year's Week known as Millennium Beast Week. Beast Week. By a couple of years, I haven't done, didn't do that much. It started in 2000, in, um, during 2000, 2000, 2001, I had mental problems. And I went to the hospital a couple of times and all that. But it is what it is. I still had delusions of the one. I still wanted a female staff to be my girlfriend or wife. But that's not going to happen. That's how I felt. It was May of 2002 I moved out of Pondview and stayed at Parker House. And I did a lot of good things there at Parker House. I was able to go around and have fun. But in 2002, I also joined a group. I signed up as a member of the Barica Access Television Network. And I learned how to do TV. And it also led to my first TV show. Yes, I did a TV show before I moved to Lowell. Yes, I did a TV show. It was called Dinner Time Forum. It was called Dinner Time Forum. And the thing, the reason I didn't put on the list of accomplishments is because I was still whacked on psychological drugs and everything. But it was a good show. I played a character named Triple X. X for well, the X is for extreme, and one of the X is the cross of Jesus Christ. But I was triple X, and I was totally whacked out. What? But well, I'm gonna go back a couple years when I joined Clown College in Hudson. It was good, but it didn't get me to a career. And I'll tell you more of the clown story later. But I really did some stupid things at the and I also alienated the female staff. My last show with them I did a show about nothing. About doing nothing. And somehow I slipped my tongue. Saying that I would set like somebody wearing a teddy and going with satin sheets and having a nice cold beverage. That was the final straw. They knew I was going bananas, and I was starting to attack people. So what they did was send me to the hospital, and then they kicked me out of Park House. So I stayed a couple weeks, at, a couple months, at Solomon's. For crisis stabilization, and totally can buy me another group home. Then I went to um, 
Harvard House. And there was a church there. And I wanted to go to it. But, surprisingly enough, one of the women that I alienated at Brecca reported me to that church, and I was kicked out. And it wasn't a good church for me to go to either. So I went to church in Lowell. I didn't really go, go to church that much anymore because of my condition. But in that year too, I created something. It was my escape from reality. I created a fundraiser along with the assistant director and in our member, we created what would become my baby and a long running creation. And that is the bowl for mental health bowl of thorn. This bowl has been going on so far for since we had 16th year. But started off as um, 10 teams, 8 to 10 teams, and we raised about $5,000. I was so stable in 2003, I, was in, I also became a member of the Clubhouse Development Board. And I fought to get into the biggest accomplishment that got me another white stone by the going to Minneapolis, Minnesota. I went to Minneapolis, Minnesota for the International Center for Clubhouse Development International Seminar Clubhouse Conference. I was lucky to be selected because I was on the Clubhouse Development Board and the board had to come. I was lucky to be in this. But in 2004, I went totally nuts again and I attacked a lot of people. And that got me kicked out of got me kicked out of Harvard House. So I was in different um, hospitals then too. Then it's then I went back to Solomon for a couple months. And they gave me a last chance. They did was they sent me to Columbus Ave, supported living. I was very good for years. I stayed in the group home. And the thing about it is, I was a little bit stable and did a lot of good things. I was able to do the balls on a couple more years, but in 2005, that is an accomplishment for itself. That was an accomplishment for itself because I was so stable enough and very good that I was able to go to an international international conference that is been surprisingly enough my biggest white stone ever Helsinki Finland there are two things that um make me what I am other than me being in the um Tasteful High School Wrestling a Dog Hall thing. Me going to Helsinki, Finland was the other biggest thing. And that's what it was all about. I went to Helsinki, Finland, had the time, got a lot of information for a club, and then... But I was... I, I had some traveling partners with me. Um, some people from Hegel Clubhouse tag team along with me, I stayed with them for those couple of days. 
and I had a good time. I was able, and that's why I was able to try new food. Reindeer. Yep, I learned to love reindeer. <laughs> It was good. It was good I, with a little chili mayo. It was good. But the thing about the thing about it is, that is the culture itself that I went to Helsinki, Finland to learn about Clubhouse. And I faced reality in two thousand six. When my ball zone was canceled due to the Mother's Day floods, the whole a big storm flooded the bowling alley. They flooded the bowling alley, and it was a heartbreaker. So I didn't do that like in two thousand six. Just stay, just stay trick or treating, more all that and all that. In 2007, the ball zone was back on, and I had was also gunning for Milwaukee, Wisconsin. That was my last trip altogether that I've gone to Milwaukee. That was my last true vacation, going to Milwaukee, Wisconsin for the international conference. The group that I was doing it was the International Center for Clubhouse Development. Minneapolis, Helsinki, Finland, and Milwaukee, Wisconsin were the three places that I went. I had a good time in Milwaukee. I went to visit the clubhouse and all that. Had some good food. Even I also had the ultimate cheeseburger is a flame broiled patty with all types of cheese. You know, Wisconsin's America's Dairyland and all that. And that's what it is. Everything went all good by right in um, 2008. Everything went a little bit downhill for a while because I had problem had so many problems. I started attacking people again and all that. Because of my medication and my and the knowledge that I now have autism that I still have behavioral problems. Um which led, in 2008, to put me back in the hospital till they found me my own apartment. I stayed at Hallmark Village from 2008 to 2015. I still did the usual things for Renaissance Club and all that. Did a couple of fundraisers for Anson Club. Um, in 2005, I started doing Comedy Night. And I hosted Comedy Night. And in 2014, was becoming my sickest day. Before then, I almost died twice. I almost died in 1995. And I almost died in 2002 due to medication and all that. But in 2014, I almost really died because I had a blood infection and an abscess to the liver. An abscess to the liver. I was really that sick. And I thought I couldn't make it, but I did prayer. I prayed to God 
to heal me. And God healed me. Just found my cat. I'll tell you more about that later. Um, God healed me. And the thing about it is, I also did some other things, which I had never told you about yet. In 1998, I met Mayor Tom Menino. I met Mayor Tom Menino in 1998. Like I had to backtrack a little bit. I met Tom in 1988, 88, 98. And then in 2002, I started a major friendship with Mayor Rita Mercy of the city of Lowell, who is still city councilor today and was still best of friends, me and Rita. He's my confidant. But in 2014, everything began to change after I started getting sick. I was downgraded from the Bolton just to watch the registration board. But everything went downhill with Branson's Club in 2014, at the end of 2014. I started to get, um, Renaissance Club started to throw me away. They said I was only good for fundraisers. And I was only good for that. But in 2011, 2011 was a big one. Because the thing about it is, 2011 became my God save. In 2011, I joined one of the most elite screen parks in history because I was an actor. But during my 2009, 2010, 2011, 2010, I created a character at Renaissance Club for public access TV called Chef Bob McBob and it was good. Chef Bob McBob was the thing. I did four specials at Chef Bob McBob and that was it. But in 2011 I start, I my resume as an actor went noticed and I got hired to Witch's Woods. I got hired from one of the best major screen parks in the world. I got hired to Witch's Woods as an actor. And that's when the beginning of a certain character comes to Risen. The name of the character is the Swagger Dynasty. And it all started with an only uh, sort of made up clown in a clown factory. That's when Bob Dollar Smart Swagger was born. You know, first he was an only, a little bit made up clown, and then in the second year in 2012, he became a fully clown by as a puppet. And the thing about it is, it was fun working at Witch's Woods. In 2013, I became the birthday boy, and that was very fun. In 2014, I fluctuated with two different parts. One as a clown, Bob Swagger, and the other as the greeter at the Nightmare Mansion. For the first three and a half years, I was in the 3D Kiva's Crypt. Then I also moved to moved to the Nightmare Mansion. And in 2015, 
when I was moving to JC Place in Lowell, I became a new character. I became something that is known as a butcher in the Victorian house. That's when you know that I had to evolve from the clown. And I became Everlark Cornelius Swagger. Everlark Cornelius I was a butcher. Is that and he had his life and all that. And it was good. It was good being Everlark. But then in 2016, I was working in Wicked's Woods and I became something else. I moved to Castle Morbid where I became a monster droid by the name of Heidelbert Leonidas. And you know why I called the character Heidelbert Leonidas? First, Heidelbert is a little play of my cousin Adelbert. You know what I mean? Heidelbert, like the Jekyll and Hyde, by Adelbert. And Leonidas is the King Leonidas. You know, Michael Phelps. It was a good year. And I really loved it. During the 2015, 2015 year, also, also 2016, I went back to the world on and all that. But the thing about it is, my priorities have changed. In 2016, I joined another group. And it became my summer thing every year. I became a season ticket holder for the Lowell Spinners. A uh, season ticket holder to the little for the little spin to the little spinners, and I had so much fun. I met new people. I took pictures with them. I had autographs, but it was totally fun. I met characters and all that. I am friends with um, the Canalligator. Gator. Sometimes with Allie and Millie Gator. You know what I mean? But the thing about it is, it's just that I'm glad that I'm going to experience, gotta go to experience games. Because it is what it is. Then in 2017, then in 2017, 17, I did the second year of experience, but 2017 was my last year of working with Witches Woods. And due to my seven year career, I made a lot of friends. On my seven year, I went back to this 3D Kiva script and reclaimed Bob the Smart Swagger. And it was good. But I gotta tell you more of a story. Since the inception, in 2003, of the Tingsboro High School Athletic Hall of Fame. I thought I was a shoo-in for it. I thought I was a shoo-in because I won a backhand award and that would give me a Hall of Fame. I tried to campaign for so many years. But then... My brother told me reality that I didn't merit. And, but then there were other, my friends, my friends from Tangsboro and other people thought, I think, that I did deserve to be merited into the 
Tanksville High School Athletic Hall of Fame. They made a great campaign over the years. But a lot of people were disappointed. A lot of people were disappointed that I did not get inducted into the Athletic Hall of Fame. So, a good friend of mine who is still a good friend of mine, Adam Kaplan, and a whole bunch of others petitioned Kingsville High School Athletic Director at right now, Ann Palumbo, to talk about why did I not get elected into the Tanksville High School Athletic Hall of Fame. But then everybody had cooler heads. And then sometime in December 2017, I got an email from Ann Palumbo and my wrestling coach Jim Tanzi saying that I want you to come to the Big Red Wrestling Tournament. And it was surprising they wanted me to come and said I was going to be honored. But the reality was something big happened. My Other than me going to Helsinki, Finland, the biggest white stone I had so far in my life is me being inducted as the inaugural member of the Tangsboro High School Wrestling Athletic Hall of Fame. I'm hoping that somehow soon that they put all the state champions into that Wrestling Athletic Hall of Fame. I got a big certificate and a pin, which I turned into a medal with a necklace. And I, and then during that year, I also got a band saying Teams for Tiger Pride. But the thing about it is, I was shocked. But it was the best accomplishment that I've ever done so far. Being an inductee into the Teams for High School Wrestling Athletic Hall of Fame. It was very big. And it was very good. And the thing about it is, I can't believe this is happening. It also came to my knowledge that my autism spread because. A couple months later, I found out that my grandnephew Jax has autism as well. But I was lucky. Jax is getting, but surprisingly enough, Jax is getting all the good attention, but I never had the stuff that Jax has now, but I got the worst. But I was lucky to be inducted into a Tanks for Hall of Fame. I'm not inducted to the main Hall of Fame yet. The only way I can be ever in be inducted into the main Hall of Fame is that my basketball team from 1989 gets inducted into the teams for high school that I call fame. That's the only way I can get inducted into the main Hall of Fame. My brother Mo was inducted into the main Hall of Fame because he was a manager of the 1975 basketball team. But I'm glad for what I have right now. But sadly enough, some things had to end. In June, I am leaving Renaissance Club after 20 years. Because of personal and safety reasons. 
it was nice for me to be part of Renaissance Club for 20 years. But due to what's now is inside of Renaissance Club, it was time for me to go. As of right now, I have no job, but I do have an arcade. It started in 2000, it started when the um, NES Classic came out. And I was getting all the retro games, Intellivision, Collegion, all that. I also got the NES Classic. And I now have an arcade in my apartment. It is what it is. And in 2017, I also got a cat. My cat right here. Want to see? Yeah, my cat. Back up. Back up. Back up. Back up. See? I have a cat. Isn't she cute? Um. I'm still alive. I'm I praise God. I thank God for everything in my life that I'm still alive. I thank God. Well, what I do every day is I get up, have a phone call with my mom, we do prayer, we read the Bible. That's what we started years ago, we started reading the Bible more. From Old Testament to New Testament and all that. We started reading the Bible, and then at night, my, me and my mom talk, and we have prayer, and we read spiritual books and all that. But the thing about it is, I, this is what it is. In 1992, I was baptized a conservative Pentecostal. In 1998, I was baptized a liberal Pentecostal. Altogether combined, I am one with God. But I am not a Democrat, I'm not a Republican. I am not an independent Green Party or any political party. I belong to God. And I don't know what the future holds for me. Will I ever get into the main Hall of Fame? Will I ever have peace and happiness? Will I ever get a wife and kids. But luckily enough, I'm happy for what I have. I'm happy that I got food on my plate, and I have a place to live. I'm happy for all of these things I have. But I, all the accomplishments, and during the spirit season for three straight years, from 2016 to 2018, I threw out the ceremonial first pitch. That's what the best thing about it is. I threw out the seven for a three straight years in a row. But, um, I'm starting to learn more about myself every day. And this is what it is. This is the story of me. I wanted to tell you this, but mom knows more of the story than I do, and it's my knowledge. I want to thank you for being my Facebook friend. I want to thank you for watching this on YouTube. I see you guys right now. Thank you very much, and I will talk to you guys soon, and be safe, be kind, and always trust in God. Thank you.